Greetings Red Wolf Nation and welcome to Inside IUE Sports. My name is Kyle Wright from the IUE East Athletic Department keeping you company this evening. The 2018-19 basketball season is right around the corner. We're going to focus on the men's basketball team for IUE East this week and here to look ahead to the 2018-19 season, the coach of the Red Wolves, Mark Hester. So coach, thanks for, for joining us. Appreciate it. Good to be here. Okay. Well, before we look ahead to 2018-19, let's, uh, let's put a bow on 2017-18. Let's uh, wrap up. Uh, you've had uh, about seven months to reflect on last season. Uh, for those that don't know, it was a 34-3 record, uh, led the NAI in wins, uh, reached the round of four at the national tournament for the second time in three years. Uh, again, you've had seven months to reflect on it. Kind of what's your summation of, uh, of last season before we move on to next year? Um, it was a good learning experience, learning how to uh, keep a group focus uh, at a higher level, um, you know, for six, seven months, uh, if not more. Uh, also kind of a, a lesson in uh, leadership from a player to player type type uh, uh, perspective, uh, because we don't have that. That's what we're missing now. Uh, so a lot of, lot of lessons to learn, but, uh, you know, disappointed not, not to be able to cap it off the way we wanted to, um, you know, still, uh, still Impressive, I guess, from the outside looking in, but to us, uh, we've kind of approached it as we still lost like, you know, 135 other teams did. So, um, you know, it, it just took us a little bit longer. Uh, but, uh, uh, it, you know, there were lessons to be learned, but uh, not basking in that whatsoever. I mean, it's, it's, it's over in a year. Got to, got to do it again. Well, as you mentioned, it's uh, time to turn the page, look ahead to 2018-19. Uh, always uh, a level of excitement anytime you're getting ready to tip off a new season. Uh, just what have been some of the themes, or I don't want to say slogans, but just uh, the themes uh, of this new year that you've shared with the team so far? I mean, our, our sole focus is, is finding leadership from within. Um, we have a lot, of, a lot of guys that are very positive, high-character guys, um, you know, but uh, we're maybe missing that one... Uh, that one, uh, oh, how to say it, where it could be on TV, um, more uh, aggressive guy that uh, is not afraid to uh, to get in people's faces when they need when it needs to happen, but also put their arm around them and you know after that and take them aside and you know explain how much how much uh, they mean to the team and this is why they they care enough to to get on them. Uh, we're still searching for that, and I mean that's been kind of what we've been looking for since, since um, you know the last game last year, um, and so it's been a process, and we're still waiting for that to kind of emerge, and so uh, that's kind of all we've been concerned about right now. That, that may actually lead into this next question. Uh, we're going to go through the whole team in a little bit, but uh, uh, for now, uh, maybe one or two returnees that you're really leaning on this year uh, to fill, not necessarily a big role, but maybe some new roles, maybe some. We've basically used the word leadership, but some roles maybe they haven't necessarily had to fill before. You know, we're from a leadership standpoint. Um, you know, Bishop Smith, uh, Jalen McKay, and Nate Niehoff, and Aaron Thomas, for that matter, all are guys that we're looking to step up to be that that guy that's going to be able to get on people uh, when needed because they're all positive guys. They're all willing to talk. They're just not necessarily willing to be unpopular for the moment. Uh, which is not a good good situation. So um, that's what we're we're working to get out of them right now. Uh, I think from a from a playing perspective, uh, you know, getting guys like uh, Dalton Blackwell and Brady Smith, that can guys that can really really shoot it, getting them to uh, develop enough offensive uh, or much, enough defensive ability that for the time they're in, that they don't uh, they don't break us down consistently uh, and get us in uh, uh, bad situations. Um, uh, on the defensive end so that they can play a little bit more. So, I mean, all those are, you know, from a leadership standpoint to the playing standpoint for those guys are all, um, you know, kind of areas that, uh, that are new to all those, all those people. And uh, they've just got to work at it, get better. And again, we'll go through all the newcomers later, but uh, for this early part of the, of the interview, just some new names or faces that uh, fans will uh, enjoy keeping an eye on um, in this season. As far as enjoyment, uh, Donald Lee, uh, freshman out of North Central from Indianapolis, uh, you know, is probably one of the most athletic guys we've ever had. Um, from a, uh, an excitement standpoint, um, he he will really he can put on a show uh, athletically. Um, 
way above the rim and he's not scared of people um, you know being there uh, so that's always fun uh, you know especially from a fan standpoint from a coach's standpoint and uh, we you know we're still working on the the freshman moments um, you know Garrett Silcott uh, another freshman from Connorsville uh, just super solid I mean still still probably uh, doesn't believe in himself as much as we do from an offensive standpoint but I think he's learning um, he's a tremendous high character kid uh, that uh, you know hopefully will will blossom into what we think he can be and a lot of it's you know just him believing in himself um, and then uh, uh, Kyle Finch um, is a is a guy that we hope will get some minutes uh, the bigger spots uh, that can is just really explosive off the floor super strong really explosive play for Ben Davis uh, two years ago won the state championship uh, so he's, he's got a good pedigree but uh, a lot of a uh, lot of things we've got to get out of his system too before we can get him playing the way we need him to play Going to go through the schedule. We'll kind of go uh, month by month. So starting with uh, uh, one in October plus November. Uh, I do want to point out on October 30th, IU East will be playing at Indiana Wesleyan, which you'll pro I know you love preseason polls, but it's probably going to be a matchup of preseason top five teams. And also on November 9th and 10th, I want to make mention of the first Bank Richmond Classic hosted by IU East. Those will be the first home games of the season. So, uh, Coach, I, I won't make you kind of break down each matchup because it's so early, but in general, in the month of November, uh, especially with a schedule, you like yours, uh, you want to be playing pretty well because those are going to be some important games for maybe postseason season uh, seeding. But you also don't want to peak in November either. So uh, talk about just what's the right mix of playing well but uh, being ready to get even better later that you shoot for in November. You know, we hope we've done our job in September and October, and it, it shows during November where you don't have as much information on teams uh, from a, from a scouting standpoint. So you hope that you've done a good enough job. Uh, preparing uh, preparing our guys for the situations that they may encounter at, at a moment's notice, you know, defensively, and they're able to adapt to them. Um, same thing to offensively. Uh, you just want to see the the um, improvement uh, with us. It's about pace of play, uh, that type of thing, and just you're just looking for daily. Uh, things that you can get 1% better on every single day. And, uh, you know, of course, we want to do that throughout the year, but in November it's particularly important because it, it shows what you did in September and October. Uh, and you're, you're laying as what we call our roots. You know, we're, we're putting in strong roots that, that we can adapt to a lot of situations, and that's what, uh, that's what November is about for us. Then on to December, kind of a different challenge, as you'll see, kind of a limited schedule. Uh, have finals week, which uh, there's a break for that, and also, of course, the holidays themselves. So uh, talk about those challenges in December. Uh, wanting to play well, there's a couple of conference games, but also working around those, uh, those breaks. Yeah, December's a, a unique situation that, you know, I think basketball is probably the only sport that, that spans two semesters that you really got to deal with a December. And in December, you're, you're not in as much of a regular rhythm on games because you do, you're broken up for finals week and then you're completely off uh, out of school and you're, you're here. And so uh, the schedules get kind of funky as far as what days you might be playing because you're not restricted by classes or, or whatever. So. Um, and, and with Christmas, the Christmas break, the, the New Year uh, coming up, it's just there's a lot to manage. So that's more of a mental test. Can you, can you keep them focused through all the distractions that are going to go on during the month of December? And that's, that's probably the biggest issue that you have to deal with then. So, you know, we really want to make sure that we're seeing that focus on a day-to-day -day basis um, during the month of December. Okay. Now we'll look at January. As we'll see, it's a very busy month. It's going to cover two pages. Uh, at this point, uh, you're in the heart of conference play. Uh, in our conference, you're also playing all of what we call the crossover games against the, the other divisions. So the road trips are a little bit longer. Uh, so uh, talk about the challenges that uh, you face in the month of January. I mean, January is the easiest and the hardest month, you know, both. Um, just because you have such a regular schedule. I mean, it's Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday. So you're in a rhythm of when to play. The problem is, is that it's also taxing uh, emotionally uh, more than anything because you've, get, you've really got to you've really got to uh, uh, stay locked in for uh, a lot of games then we have that awkward week where we play three games in one week and they're you know it's either two at home or two on the road but they're all three against good quality opponents and so it's uh, with a team that prepares as much as we are it's such a short turnaround time that that it really really uh, stretches us to the max uh, that week and so it's uh it's just a lot going on in january like i said the rhythm part is good but the the staying focused and locked in for whatever how many games almost eight nine games in that month um it, it, 
it, it's pretty tough. And so that January is a, a difficult thing too. And finally, uh, finish up with February, uh, the end of the regular season. Obviously, that's when you want to be uh, peaking going into what is hopefully postseason play. So just uh, the mindset in the month of February, knowing that, hey, this is when, this is when championships get won. Fortunately, we've, you know, we've had a lot to play for at that time of the year. So for us, it's probably a lot easier than some teams. I think February is the easiest month for us because you see the light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, you want to close out strong. You want to finish strong. Uh, if we've done our work in, you know, in, in November and December and January, um, you know, February is, is much easier to focus on because you know you only have a handful of regular season games left. And then once you come to tournament time, um, that's when you have no issues with motivating them, getting them to come out with energy and show up every single day because they're excited about it already because it's tournament time. I mean, it's, you know, these kids, that's why we have a lot of Indiana kids that are, you know, they're kind of bred for that, you know, that they uh, know when it's tournament time you crank it up a notch and I think they're, they're really good at about doing that. So February is probably the easiest month for us um, as far as, uh, as having to deal with the emotional side of things uh, and the, the playing schedule at the same time. All right, so we've seen the schedule. When we come back, we'll meet the team for the 2018-19 Red Wolves when we come back on Inside IUE Sports. Three years ago, I came here to play basketball here at IU East, and I'm a business finance major, and I really just wanted to get into a bank, and First Bank Richmond was very accepting and gave me an opportunity. I kind of got to see more as an employee instead of a student athlete of how they really impact the community. Back home, I feel like there's really not an organization like First Bank Richmond that gives back to the community like they do here in Richmond. First Bank Richmond is just very generous in all that they do in the community, and that is tremendous. What if a home phone could also be a smartphone? And what if that home phone could save you money on your home and wireless bill at the same time? With Xfinity Voice, you get amazing technology like readable voicemail on your smartphone, caller ID on your TV, and even text messaging, all for a low price. Start saving with unlimited nationwide talk and text and switch to Xfinity Voice for just $19.99 a month for 12 months. Call 1-800-XFINITY today. Almost done. Now you can pay your bill, manage your appointments, and check your connection status. Anytime, anywhere. Oh, so you're protesting? Okay. Introducing Xfinity My Account, available on any device. What can I do for you today? My throat's been hurting all day and I have class in an hour. Okay, let's get you feeling better. Receive quality care without the wait. Read Health Now right beside you. Hi, how can I help you? My daughter has a fever and she isn't feeling well. Okay, let's get her feeling better. Receive quality care within the comfort of your own home. Read Health Now right beside you. Welcome back to Inside IUE Sports. We're meeting the 2018-19 IUE men's basketball team with Coach Mark Hester. We talked about the schedule and the outlook. Now let's meet the team. We're going in numerical order, so that means first off we're going to be talking about Kendall Rollins, a senior out of Indianapolis. Uh, averaged four points and 2.9 rebounds a game last year in pretty limited time. Uh, a little bit about Kendall uh, as he heads into his senior year. I mean, Kendall, I think the numbers are probably misleading on what he's able to, to do for us. Uh, one, you know, being able to shoot it at a bigger spot, he stretches the floor a little bit. Uh, really, really good defender, both on ball and uh, as a help side defender, uh, which, which makes things a lot easier on us schematically. So uh, I think, you know, even though he may not produce points and rebounds necessarily, he's, he's really, really uh, valuable to have out there, but just because of his ability to, to uh, let us play our game a little better. Uh, then, again, continuing numerically, number one, uh, someone who was around all of last year and going to get to see him in action for the first time this year, uh, Julian Short uh, out of the Chicago area. Still kind of a big mystery. Uh, you know, he hasn't, uh, hasn't been healthy uh, since he's been eligible to play. Um, and so, you know, last year he was here, but he didn't, we didn't really get to see him play a lot. So uh, what we have seen him in practice, he's still really limited with his injuries right now. Um, you know, he brings a little bit of some, some city toughness, uh, if you will, at a, 
uh, with also a pretty high skill level, physical skill level, was just getting getting him to understand the the inner workings of how fast things are going to happen and how important it's going to be to to uh, make decisions quickly. Um, you know, both offensively and defensively for him to be able to make an impact with us. First of the freshmen that we're going to meet is uh, Ethan Helton, uh, 6'2 guard. He went to Eastern Green High School. You know, Ethan's been a, uh, I, I don't know if it was a pleasant surprise. We felt pretty confident coming in that uh, he was going to be able to to uh, uh, impact the team in a positive way. I mean, he's just, he's just a solid guy. He he's listens. He does exactly what's asked of him. Um, he does everything that uh, that you would want from a, a hustle guy, but then he can make shots too. Uh, and as he's he's starting to come to his own offensively, will be in uh, um, be in good positive situation when he's on the floor. Okay. Another freshman. I don't know if I should read too much in the fact he's wearing number five, which has been a pretty good number around here. Uh, you mentioned earlier Donald Lee out of Indianapolis. I mean, not only was that his number in high school, but there is a reason why that he's wearing number five too. Uh, you know, I think that. Those are the expectations kind of set for him. Uh, he, he's he's just got such a high motor right now that it's that's a good thing. But it's, you know, using it, knowing when and when not to use it, is the the key. Uh, and it, and he's growing by leaps and bounds every day. Super high basketball IQ. Great great guy wants to uh, wants to do things the right way. So uh, he'll be fine. It's just going to be a freshman. The freshman growing pains uh, that you have to go through with everybody. Okay. Uh, next up, uh, number ten, Bishop Smith, uh, the top leading returning scorer, eleven point one points a, a game last year. Also made forty six percent of his threes, and that was on a lot of threes. Uh, made the all tournament team at the national tournament. Uh, so Bishop back for his junior year. And if you remember, Bishop started out the year shooting twenty percent, I think, for the first you know five or six games. So what he did. After that was pretty impressive. Uh, Bishop's, Bishop's turned himself into one of the, uh, uh, I think it'd be the, one of the premier guards maybe in the country. I hope um, just because he's worked at it, he's he's really studied the game uh, a lot over the past year. He's worked with us really closely on reads and and breaking things down. And then, and I think that uh, he's just matured so much as a player that uh, he's gonna he's gonna have a could could be poised for a good year. And uh, probably could say some similar things next up. Number 11, Jalen McKay, averaged uh, nine and a half points uh, per game last year and also made the all-tournament team at the national tournament. You know, Jalen's another one that his value is not always, always in the points that he scores. It's in, in what he brings to the, the overall scheme of what we do. And, and defensively, when, when Jacoby got hurt last year and wasn't able to be our primary on-ball defender, uh, you know, Jalen being able to step into that and the discipline that he showed in, in following the scouts with that was impressive. And if he can continue to do that, um, the offensive side of things are going to come because we're going to create so many easy opportunities off of his defense that, uh, um, you know, he'll be, he'll be extremely effective and, and hopefully we'll have a good year this year too. Okay. Uh, next up, number 12, uh, he's a junior in his second year here, uh, Keating Rombach, who at 6'7 gives you a, a lot of options. Yeah, I mean, Keating's one of those versatile guys that can play, you know, on the perimeter. He can also play inside, uh, you know, guard inside, I should say. Um, we need Keating to step up and start making a, a big impact uh, on the team from an offensive standpoint. I think defensively he kind of already uh, does a lot of that. Uh, we really need him to be more aggressive. Um, offensively, and we've had a lot of talks with that. And uh, but he's another one that, that preseason-wise, has been battling a lot of injuries. Uh, just trying to get him healthy and get him back out there full time, so we can figure out exactly what exactly we have. Okay, I uh, got someone going into his senior year, uh, number thirteen, Aaron Thomas, uh, a well-deserved All-Conference honoree last year. Uh, seven points, eight rebounds, uh, sixty-five blocks on the year, and uh, he's one. The stats definitely don't show the the impact. But. Yeah, I mean Boog, as we call him. Uh, is uh, uh, probably the most underrated guy maybe in in all of college basketball. Um, again, the stats don't show what he does and and how well uh, what he means to us as a as a as a player. Um, his presence alone just gives us so much confidence defensively. Um, it's almost he has the he has the Jordan effect. You used to hear a lot of times showing my age now. I guess when when Jordan played, uh, you know, when the Bulls would get stagnant, it was because everybody stood around and watched. Michael score and everybody was watching uh, watching that. Well, the same thing happens to us rebounding wise. Uh, sometimes we struggle getting rebounds, and it's because everybody's so used to sta standing around watching Boog get everything that uh, um, whenever he's out of the game, we struggle to to get stops sometimes because of that. And that's something that uh, uh, just tells you how much impact he has on the game. And hopefully, he's going to expound his offensive um, abilities this year, which would which would mean a lot to us running more efficiently. Uh, another upperclassman, another person who plays a valuable role. Uh, talk about number 14, Ray Ramsey. 
Man, Ray is uh, not a guy that gets a lot of playing time, but he's probably definitely our MVP um, uh, from a team standpoint because he is our culture guy. He's our culture enforcer. Um, he is. Uh, he, Ray's never had a bad day that, that since I've been around him in three years, and uh, he's always got a smile on his face. And let me see the pictures. That's exactly what he looks like all the time. And uh, he encourages. He's probably one of the, the best encouragers and leaders. Uh, just because he may physically not be able to do something, he still understands how to do it and is not afraid to go up to his teammates and, and encourage them on doing it right. Uh, and if you come out of the game and you're not as, as enthusiastic as he is and as crazy as he is on the bench, uh, he'll let you know about it. And, and guys like that are so valuable. Uh, to the to the overall um, you know culture of your your program and and uh, you know Ray has just Ray has just exceeded all expectations from that standpoint and you know we love him to death. You could actually start a decent football team from what I could tell. Ethan Helton, who we talked about earlier, has a state runner-up medal, and Kyle Finch, who we're going to talk about now, number fifteen, he's got a state championship medal in football, I believe. And uh, talk about what he'll do for the basketball team. Well, we did play our annual flag football game, and let's just say Kyle's was a state champion at, as the end, but not as a receiver. Because in flag football, where you got to catch it, it didn't didn't go so well for him. But uh, that's another story for another day. He was on my team, obviously. But uh, uh, Kyle's uh, Kyle's an extremely powerful, uh, explosive guy. Plays a lot bigger than what he is. Um, the thing that's unique about Kyle that we're going to ask him to do that he's never been never been asked to do before is actually shoot a three, and he's really quite effective at it and uh, showed some signs of summer of doing it with Kyle. It's just about learning our way of doing stuff, uh, being more vocal. He's kind of a quiet, uh, kind of a quiet guy and he's just got to come out of a shell a little bit vocally um, in order to make us effective when he's on the floor. So that's the, that's the big challenge for him. Uh, speaking of shooting the three, number 20, uh, Brady Smith uh, hit 55% of his threes in limited action last year. You need him to do something like that uh, this coming year. Yeah, I mean, Brady's that type of shooter. I mean, he's that good. and, and uh, I added, it's just a matter of him uh, doing a little of his work before he catches it. I think he's he's somebody that you know can he's very handsy with his shot, so he can kind of be standing still, and it's getting him to get in position and get his feet ready a lot of times before he does catch it. Uh, but the challenge with Brady is is getting him to uh, uh, understand things better on the defensive side uh, and be very um, very improved on a vocality. Of, of things because he can be out there maybe doing things right but if he's not talking uh, we will have a breakdown and he's just gotta he's just gotta understand that okay. uh, back to the the freshman class uh, number 21 Garrett Silcott from the the, the the nice program they've got going at Connorsville yeah I mean man C coach Brown has has got it going down there and uh, he's, he, he's probably one of the better high school coaches uh, you know in the state as far as teaching the game and 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 uh, getting guys to under, uh, buying into a system. And, and Garrett was a product of that system through a lot of their success, you know, when they went to the semi-state when he was a junior. Uh, then last year he was asked to score a whole lot, and he, he scored a, a lot for them because if he didn't, they really didn't get a lot of offensive production. And now his role's going back more towards uh, running a team uh, type aspect, but he's still got the ability that he learned from last year of of having to score, and it's just getting the. We always say, got to get the Connorsville out of him, you know, where they they uh, slow it down a little bit. And uh, um, here with the shot clock, you know, we tried to try to get him to understand that, you know, you getting a, a wide open three or getting a getting a layup or even a dunk because he's very athletic um, uh, is. Uh, Early in the shot clock, it might be the best shot we get the entire possession. You kind of got to take that, and he just was really reluctant at first. So, you know, Garrett will be a really, really good player because he's just super high character and uh, um, does everything you ask of him. So we're we're excited about his future. Okay. Uh, another guy who can shoot it pretty well, a number twenty-two, uh, Dalton Blackwell. Talk about his role going into his sophomore year. Don't get skilled on the defensive end. Uh, it's pretty much that simple. I mean, offensively, he can do whatever we ask him to do. I mean, he can handle it, he can shoot it, he can he can go to the basket. Uh, you know, he, he gets all that stuff. It's it's defensively uh, being able to to uh, be a good team defender. I don't think you know some some guys. It's a little much to ask for them to ever be great individual on ball defenders, but everybody has the ability to be a great team defender, and that's the thing with with Dalton and Brady for that matter. Is be great team defenders, and if they can do that. Uh, where they can be on the floor, it really Im impacts our spacing and, and how you have to guard us, and that's, that will be a big positive for us. One more freshman to talk about uh, out of Indianapolis, went to Pike, uh, kind of a uh, late round steal, if you will, on the recruiting trail, number 32, Steve Miller. You know, we're excited about Steve. Steve's had some, uh, some, some 
health slash injury issues in the, in the preseason. We hope that uh, he overcomes that because when he is here, he's he, he shows signs of, of being a great one. And uh, he's another one, and he's 6'5", and has a 7'6 wingspan. And so, he's, yeah, it's freakish. And uh, uh, the, the problems that he's able to cause uh, – with with that is is tremendous and and we really love what he does when he's here and it's just a matter of him taking care of himself and getting healthy and uh and uh that that will have a big impact on our success as the year goes on and last but not least uh, number 34 nate niehoff uh, seven points and four rebounds per game last year and that was really in about 12 minutes per game so we can imagine what that'd be in 20 or 30 minutes a game so uh, uh talk about nate's role uh, as he enters his senior year Nate's got to score, and and we know that, and uh, that's he's able to do it as a big guy. I mean, to be able to step out on the floor and, and shoot it as well or better than most guards, um, you know, and then also go in the post, and he can put it on the floor. He handles it really well. He's a really good passer. Uh, just a lot of positives in Nate's offensive game. It's just getting him to feel more comfortable and 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 being aggressive offensively. Uh, he's a, he's another one that uh, uh, you know when he plays. He's got to be able to uh, protect the rim. Uh, Nate, he, he's he's athletic, vertically athletic, but uh, he's better at taking charges. He's the best we have at taking charges, um, you know, and, and having him rebound balls out of his area. Uh, that's huge. But he's a great communicator. Uh, lots of experience in there, and uh, he's a guy that you know wants to win, and and that's uh, it's a really valuable thing. So, uh, look forward to Nate having a great senior year. Okay. In 30 seconds or less, uh, for fans uh, meeting the team for the first time, why should they want to come see this team this year? It's probably the most athletic team we've ever had. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. They're going to play, we're going to play at a, at a pretty high pace and, and uh, should be you know, just, a, just a good brand of basketball to watch. Um, you know, again, I think we're known for our ball movement. I think that will continue, and, and then defensive pressure will be uh, at some point this year we will get it to where we want it, and it will be uh, a really exciting, really exciting time. All right, well, we're certainly looking forward to it. So, uh, Coach, thanks for taking time to join us to talk about the 2018-19 Red Wolves. It all starts October 30th. IU East will be at reigning national champion Indiana Wesleyan. You can check out the whole schedule at iueredwolves.com. This has been Inside IUE Sports. I'm your host, Kyle Wright. Thank you so much for taking time to join us, and we'll see you next time.